All right, for my final bucket list project story, I am documenting the story of my pillow. There are actually two pillows. One of them I got rid of a couple years ago, but they were purchased 18 years ago, which is kind of crazy to think about. And these were the first like major purchase I made as an adult on my own. And it just seemed like a, something to document in terms of these having gone through a big period of my life with me and now moving on to the next phase. With 2020 being so strange, it just, it feels very fitting to let go of these in this year since there's so many things that we need to let go of. So I actually printed my journaling directly on watercolor paper because I'm gonna have a little fun here and do some watercolor embellishing over here on the side. But the first thing I need to do is crop my photo down. I sized it just slightly smaller than three by four and a half so that I could leave about a quarter inch white border. I love leaving white borders on my photos. I find that gives me the best look on the page. Just really sets off the image. This is my fist cars. Poor, like a little mini trimmer. This is one of my favorite little tools for cropping photos. Saves a lot of room on the desk. Okay, so we'll recycle those. And then we've got our photo. So I know I want to have this photo a little bit at an angle, maybe a little bit up here. Maybe not that quite much of an angle. I have this stamp set from Everyday Explorers. I was looking at the real life, this real life too. My story matters maybe. I think the real life one is really what resonates with me and I like the script of that. I'm gonna go ahead and do my stamping now. I'm using the Hero Arts black dye ink. I actually think I'm gonna put this right up there and then I'm gonna put my title through here. I'm probably gonna use this refresh title here. I thought about the other side here. I thought about using Let It Go, but really this is, it's not as much about letting go as starting over, starting fresh. So I really felt like this was a better sentiment. Also, the watercolors I'm using have a little bit of metallic to them, and so I thought it'd be fun to use the metallic thickers here. But we're gonna go in with our stamping. I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm gonna wait to do my photo last because the watercolor, so I'm just gonna kinda eyeball where I want this particular stamped image. No matter where I put it, it'll be okay. Magnets on there. Hair. All right. So let's get our stamp ready. I love how this makes it so easy to ink your stamps. I am gonna try to make sure there's no excess here. It's gonna cause a problem. You can use a wet wipe for that if you had one. And then we'll go right in here. One of the reasons I love using black ink was because it's just so reliable to give a nice crisp image. Uh, colored inks are a challenge sometimes, and I will enjoy playing, but sometimes I just rather have a reliable experience rather than, you know, than chance it. All right. Pull those off there. We are done with the stamp press for now. We have nothing on our table here. Oops. Take a little ink over here. 
I do have these enamel dots that I'm probably going to use at the very end. I really liked how they brought out this particular color in my bedspread. But now the next step is to go in with our watercolors. I've got both a water brush and this larger brush. Generally you want to start with lighter shades and then add onto that with things that are a little more vibrant. I'm going to actually just squeeze some water into the bottom here. So I want to start with the larger brush. I'm eyeing kind of this color here, maybe this, this kind of tan. It's kind of peachy color. It's just kind of a wash. Or a little. A little bit of fibers here. I don't know if this is in this. This brush maybe wasn't as clean as I would have liked it to be. lay down just like an initial wash here. All right, I will go in with the water brush. I'm going to do a little bit more, bring some more vibrant in here. Some more of the peachy color. I mean, this is very much eyeballing. I know because my photos here, I want to have a little bit more weight down here at the bottom. I might bring in a little more, like kind of this gold, rusty colors. Make it a little heavier down here. Because I'm using watercolors and I'm kind of doing a lot of blending, I'm choosing not to bring in any of the green. There's a little bit of green and gray in the bedspread, but I didn't want to make this too muddy. And I think that this choice of colors will go well with the rose gold and then the little pink enamel dots. All right. All right, I think I'm good. Got a little bit wet. It's buckling just a tiny bit, but that happens often. And once it dries, I'll be able to flake off a little bit of fibers. I just think this brush, I didn't get washed very well. It's okay. All right, put this aside for now. All right, the watercolor is all dry now, so we are ready to finish the page. I think the next thing I'll do will be adhere my photo using my Kakuyo dot liner, my favorite adhesive. This would be a spot where you could use pop dots, maybe even throw some pattern paper behind it, but I think I'm happy with the way it is. And then I think I'm going to end up allowing the letter stickers to go over the photo. These are foam letter stickers and the package does say acid free. Um, I am not someone who really thinks a ton about that, but I have been a little more mindful of some of these more plastic items that don't say acid free and trying not to put those directly on my photo. Um, I'm not under the expectation that my pages are going to last forever, but I don't want to have some sort of weird interaction that causes it to really fall apart. All right. 
So it would be fun to do like that actually. Oh, I think that's nice. Yeah, we'll do like this. I also, one of the things I love about these foam stickers is you can kind of bend them a little bit to fit in the space that you have. All right. Oh, this is so nice. Okay. What else do we want to do here? So we've got a few enamel dots. Definitely going to add those. I feel like it needs something else. Maybe some like die cut pieces. Let me see what I can find. All right. I found this little collection of die cuts. Let's see if there's anything in here that might go. The, I saw this little flower out of the corner and I thought these colors kind of initially stood out as maybe having some things that we could tuck behind. Yeah, I think those flowers are probably the best option here. Yeah, in terms of kind of going with the overall color story. This is, this is going a different direction than I thought it might. Let's see. Oh, that's really sweet. I'm going to tuck those in a little bit more, maybe. Pull this one out. Like that. Okay. Maybe a dot there. Bee, this little bee here goes, but it's kind of cute. I do feel like we need something a little bit. Like something a little more balanced down here. You like that? If we take this flower away, sometimes I'll end up kind of layering things more if I feel like there's not enough balance. All right, I think I'm done. I think I'm good with it. It's uh, it is complete now. All right, I hope that was helpful for you. This was fun. I had mentioned in the podcast how much I love doing mixed media backgrounds, even if it's just a little bit of watercolor. I would not actually tried that on a hybrid page with printed journaling. It definitely is a little bit different, but I'm really happy with the result. This is just a really sweet, simple page. It's the story of the pillow, and I'm excited to have it told. And I'm also excited that this is the final uh, exclusive page in the bucket list project. I can't believe we've made it all the way until sprint 12. We do have two more other examples I'll be sharing and then we'll kind of wrap things up. And if you hadn't seen the announcement already, I'm going to be taking all of my exclusive pages and all of our lessons learned and really wrap this into a 
faster paced experience uh, early next year inside of the Simple Scrapper community. Um, so look for that. Everyone who's already in the class will have access to that new, shorter to more tighter experience. And I'm looking forward to revisiting this again and really seeing what we got out of it and what we learned from doing these type of deeper stories, whether they were small stories that had a deeper meaning, whether they're these big monumental stories, sometimes like frivolous and fun stories, but definitely going into more detail and going beneath the surface of the things that we normally capture in our scrapbooking. All right, and with that, I hope you have a great week. Take care. All right, so this happens to me all the time. When I go to photograph a page, I, I see it through a different lens. I kind of see the contrasted areas and I felt like this got too heavy up here and I could have gone a little bit deeper on the watercolor down here. So I actually moved the flower from over here to down here and made a little cluster here. And just looking at it through the viewfinder, it does feel a little bit more balanced now. So I didn't want to make you think you were duped or anything. I wanted to pop back in and share how it turned out in the end. And this happens so often to me.